Laurel's iPhone, Judy Gurman. Okay, so then do I just do the same thing? So I would say, oh, where'd she go? Well, that's Matt Rudakoff. I don't even know who I is, but we'll see. Hi, Matt. Maybe. Oh, oh there's muted. Peter. He might be muted. Peter must be I'm Laura's muted. girlfriend. Make sure that I'm. Um... I'm here. Hi. Hi. Hey, Peter. How you doing? Okay. Everybody okay? Yeah. Good. Oh, John too. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> I'm the techie. Hello, okay. <laughs> Laurel, are you a new planning board member? <laughs> I'm the IT. Oh, <laughs> Everybody needs good IT. I just um I just yesterday had to host I had to host my first meeting. Which means I had to set it up and, and control it and it was like very it was it was frustrating for me. And uh, it's a lot of new technology. Done. But it's gonna be so simple once we're doing it. Yeah, bravo, good for you. <laughs> How is everybody? Doing okay? We're hanging in there, yeah. Good. Yeah, I've been doing good. Judith should, Judith should have no problem with this. No, she said that she was very familiar with this. Yeah, I would imagine. James Conrad might be a little bit late. He had a prior, prior engagement Zoom party. <laughs> So we're not we're not having any the we're not having like the Verizon applicant on, are we? No. no. Although Selena Selena people Jess is here. Selena people are here as the public, so I'm admitting Jess. Okay, but well, they're not on the agenda though, are they? No. Good. Just to look over the oh, and it went away. <laughs> Does that happen? That happened with Judy too. Um, okay. Hi, Jess. Oh, so you people there with you? Yes, Ashley and Bill are here. So don't talk about me, Matt. <laughs> Hi, Jess. I don't know if you can hear me. Pencil, please. So, Melissa, we haven't gotten another um, another submission from Verizon, right? No, I haven't gotten anything more. There is a second one coming, though. Right, because they said they're going to respond to the comments. Yep, we uh, they, they, were, they were very simple comments, you know, just making some things consistent on the site plan and application yep. form. And I relayed all that back, and I haven't heard anything. So, Good. Just it. hopefully soon. Sharpen it. <laughs> <laughs> we need a few more. <laughs> Did you mute Jeff? No, I don't know. Or did he mute himself? <sighs> he might have muted himself. So what should I do? Should I unmute him? So John Laval doesn't have a camera? Is that what's going that, on? Yes. Yeah, he but, doesn't have video connection. I don't know if he just doesn't have a camera. But he's or here. He's yeah. So you should hear his voice. You, you don't hear his voice either. John, are you here? Mm -mm. Is there right? Should I unmute Jess and see if we can hear him? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Jess. Talk to me. Uh-uh. Wait, wait, unmute. Why won't I unmute, Ash? He, did he mute can it? Can you hear me now? I yes. can hear you now. Well, all you right. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. <laughs> you too. It's amazing, actually. <laughs> I'd also be muted until you get on our project. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure you were good. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. You know, you, you have the ability to mute or unmute people. Okay. I would, at least for today, just have everybody unmuted. If they want to mute themselves, that's fine. Right. But then as you and Peter, you know, you work your way Progress. through the meeting. If people just, you know, are a little too rowdy, you may start to mute them if they misbehave. I have the control. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, don't let me forget to get consensus of meeting start time for the next meeting, 6.30 or 7. I think we all were going for the 6.30. Okay. You heard from people? <clears throat> well, that's just, like that's just been the general uh, consensus all along. 
Double check, but sounds good. <laughs> the sooner we start, the sooner we end. <laughs> Fair. I didn't think of that with you guys, but that makes sense. <laughs> okay, we'll make sure that's all right. Melissa, for some reason, I don't see a raised hand. Are we going to be muted or? I hear you, Matt. I know, but, but, but you were saying that you're going to mute everybody? No, I'm not muting anybody. Okay, good. Well, I show eight participants here. Yeah, John's on. John just got on. Judith's on. Hi, John. Oh, unmute. Ah, there we go. Unmute. That was my computer. Unmute. Hi, John. Well, she's switch back and forth to see everybody. Uh, Ashley and John don't have cameras turned on. Oh, I certainly do. I'm looking at. Hi, phone. John. Well, so John. Hi, John. Hi, Judy. John. Hello, Matt. Yeah. Hello, Judy. Three, four. <laughs> and then we still need more. We need yeah, John, more. Yeah, John does have an, uh, an X to his camera, but it's coming on. Yeah, it's weird, right? And John, you can see all of us? John yeah. on his iPad. I bet you he's logged in both places. Look. I'm on an iPad. So am uh, I. What's the matter? You, you're logged into two places, John. Okay, I need to log out of the computer. I don't think I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. So but if there are more people, we'll be able to see everybody. It's silly to have them. Yeah, but there's no camera on his computer, so it, it's not taking up space. No, no, no. The camera it has is. a the, the computer has a camera. It's okay. the audio I couldn't get working. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, we're waiting on one more board member before we can start, and James was probably going to be a little late, so. Well, I see a block for Ashley and a block for John that is not his face. You see more than I see. And Ashley doesn't have a camera on. She's just there to help um, control the meeting if need be as an administrator. Hey, John. John, if, you're, if you can't get the audio working on your computer, you know, it's, you, no, can no. Dial, you can dial no, in. No, I'm on the iPad with audio, Matt. It's fine. Right, I hear you and the... see you, John. Who is Ashley? Who's Kay Torres? She's Harry. a representative for Selena. She's part of the public. Oh. Jess Walker is here also. Okay. And Hi, Ashley everyone. Sl Ashley Slovinsky is my office manager. Okay. But I can okay. only see nine people at a time. And at the moment, at the moment, one is taken up by one of John's icons, and the oh. other is taken up with Ashley. Uh, he turns his camera, oh, his computer off. Judy? I did. I did. I turned off the computer. Hey, Judy, there should be a setting on your screen where you can turn off seeing anybody without a camera. Really? Yep, in the top right corner, there should be, if you, like, where you turn it into gallery view, speaker view, you should be able to do that. I'm on an iPad. It doesn't have the same controls. Okay, let me look at my iPad. I have it with me. There's, I see there's, there is something I can do. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know if I can do that. Close. Well, on the iPad, there's, when your box comes up in the lower right-hand corner, Judy, there's a, there's a plus and a minus. Press the plus and it'll give you at least four camera views. I have I'm seeing nine camera views. Nine? But I just got rid of yours. Yes, nine. If you put your iPad horizontally, you get nine images. One is Kay and one is Ashley. Hi, Stuart. And I see Stuart. So I guess that's as good as it's going to be. If anybody else comes on, I have to go sideways like that. I just did. We're all Cody learning. Collins? Who's Cody Collins? Oh, this must be all public. Yep. I'm, I'm with Selena as well. It should to replace. Okay, I've got some public. That's nothing I can do about that. So it should replace those of people who are actually talking. Yeah. So, Melissa? So, when people talk, it goes to you. So, Judy, it should change on your screen as people are talking. Do you see it me? Does. No, it doesn't in the gallery view. I'd have to sweep looking for it. It's not exactly. Um, All right, Connor. So I've done enough meetings with this now to know that it doesn't. It, it doesn't automatically give me the person who's speaking. Don't worry about it. 
So, Melissa? Yes? It's a little after seven. Uh, can we open this meeting? Do we have a quorum here? We do, and Connor's coming in, but it's taking a little bit. Uh, why don't we pull the board to, so that, is this being recorded? Yes. So why don't we pull the board so everybody sure. identifies Hi, Connor. who's on the board. Hi, Connor. We see you. Maybe Connor, you do. Mike is not on. <laughs> Hi, Connor. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how about you? Uh, got, All right. to, got, got it figured out now. <laughs> we, have, we have a quorum. Wonderful. Oh. Welcome to all the public. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, a little after seven o'clock, and I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Woodstock Planning Board, which is the uh, uh, meeting for the 30th of the month, and it is a workshop meeting. And uh, we have a, a quorum. So, um, like to go to the first items on the agenda, um, which is a discussion, uh, one about Verizon and the other about Selena. So regarding the Verizon discussion, I would like if Matt would bring us up to date on where we stand with Verizon and what actions the board needs to take. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we have a, a memo that I hope everybody got, um, which is uh, addressing our review of the application materials. And, um, uh, and where we are really on that is that we've understood that they are preparing a response to that memo. Um, the uh, majority of items on that memo really were just corrections on their plans and on their submission materials. Uh, and uh, they're self-evident, I think, and um, weren't anything that I, I thought that I thought was was uh, presenting a problem. And um, I just uh, let me just go and see if I uh, have that here. Okay, good. And um, I'm, so uh, we're asking them to um, indicate that the Verizon wireless are situated on the existing tower. That's just our comments. Um, we need to confirm compliance. Uh, with the zoning ordinance about the size of them. And this, we're not saying that they're not compliant, it's just that they don't supply the dimensions on the plan. So they'll do that and presumably those will be in compliance. And we'll be able to determine that when we get their new submission. Uh, the one thing they don't say, and it's really not anything for us Maybe to evaluate. Not, can't see me. <laughs> so are you guys hearing me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, the next item on the memo is that um, we are just really asking them for a statement that uh, an explanation of how the proposed changes will optimize their radio frequency coverage. Uh, they think that's the intent, but there isn't any written statement which documents why that is or what the reason is or what the shortcoming is. So that's really just a short statement which they have readily available uh, for them, but it really would just sort of make the application more complete and, and these comments are really largely completion comments because there is a time frame that the uh, that the uh, that the board is supposed to respond to within an app within within the submission of an application like this, but that time frame really only kicks in when the application is complete. But these comments that we're making really relate to the completeness of the application, and um, uh, and item number four is just an indication about the the top elevation of the top antenna, um, which they, uh, I think they say the tower is 140 feet and then there's a, an additional antenna on top, but they should just include somewhere what the total height is to the top of the top antenna. Not that there's a problem with that or that they're not allowed to have it, it's just a matter of them stating what that is. Um, and then it's our feeling that the tower should enumerate who the other carriers are. Um, and that, you know, they've left, they, they didn't leave that complete. I don't know that they have a problem with that. I know that there's sometimes they leave one or two that are vacant, but we also know that there are other carriers on there. So, because the planning board's approval is really obligating those other carriers as well. And so the names of them should be there uh, to the extent that they're available. Um, the next comment is, has to do with the whip antenna again. Uh, the plan doesn't really include the road and the parking for the communications facility, and that's just a matter of 
it being a complete site plan. Um, uh, uh, the next item really has to do with um, uh, correcting the stated elevation, so it includes the top antenna. That's a, a repeat of the other item that I had, had mentioned. And um, uh, the next item is um, that with the proposed antenna configuration, uh, the exposure in all areas from ground level of this, of this facility would be 1%. But they don't say that uh, cumulatively with the other carriers. So we're getting at a radio frequency engineering thing that is beyond my understanding. I mean, if there was a need for a technical question, I have Will Agresta, who's my radio frequency uh, expert on this, available by phone. But this comment just means that they are reporting on the, um, uh, the exposure in all areas, but it's not including the cumulative impact of those other carriers. And uh, it's just a, a, required of, a requirement of the zoning. And again, it's a very simple fix from our perspective. The next two items are the ones that really are a little bit more, um, uh, delve into a little bit more um, things that need to be discussed. Skipping number 10, I'll go to number 11, which simply says that the zoning loan requires a certificate of insurance um, on an annual basis. And, um, and I just don't know, um, I don't know if we have that or not. And so maybe the board members know, or the applicant will say what that is, or the applicant will submit a revised insurance certificate, or if the town has one that fulfills the requirement, but that's just us raising that problem. And then the last one, which was number 10, I, I skipped one, um, and this one I know is one that I've spoken to Supervisor McKenna about. And that is that a section of the ordinance, of the zoning ordinance, 260-64K, requires bonding uh, to cover the cost of removal and, um, and maintenance for the access road. And that's a very standard thing. And most um, towers have that and accept that in, uh, in other towns. And we just don't know um, if that bond is in place. And so we raised it as a comment but I know that uh, Bill McKenna said that this, the nature of their lease with the tower owner is such that they continue to pay their rent until the, day, until the tower is removed to the satisfaction of the town. And I, I know that that is not what the zoning ordinance says, but maybe that does fulfill the, the board's requirements, but that's out of my pay grade. And that would either be a matter for the town attorney or the planning board attorney to see if the, the terms of the town's lease for the tower and its requirement that it be removed or else they continue to pay rent satisfies that provision of the ordinance. So with that... Matt, I really, I really the tower have that itself to is say. owned by the town. Pardon? The tower itself is owned by the town. So... Who has the obligation for removing for removing it? The town. Well, you're trying to say that the financial responsibility is the town's between the town and our partner. Yeah. Between the town and their partner, Bill McKenna is saying. The partner being Crown Communications. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so that's who the bond. So so normally the owner of the tower would be supplying that bond, and if there were a private owner, that private owner could, could be the one responsible for it. But my understanding is that the nature of the lease and the lease payments, which is that the, um, the, the, either the carriers or the, or, or the carriers continue to pay rent until the tower is removed. Until, until their equipment so for is our, removed. So they have to remove their equipment from our tower. So Correct. Hey, Correct. We, hey, Connor, how are you? We, we own the tower. We have an agreement with Crown Castle um, with regard to removing the tower. So it's that, that the responsibility is between the town and, and Crown Castle to do that. Um, as far as the equipment, Verizon's equipment, T-Mobile's equipment, uh, Cell One or whoever Cell One, whatever they call themselves now, they're obligated to remove their specific equipment, their antenna, and they keep paying rent a lease until that's removed. So from my perspective, they can leave it up there from now until the end of time. We're getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I guess the only issue with that would be if they just stop paying, what is your remedy? I, I, we, we would sue, we'd have to sue them in court. 
Right. And with bonds, you very often have to sue them anyway to have the bonding company. It, it, uh, exactly. Stand up to the... Uh, but as far as the maintenance of the, the road, the maintenance of the tower, the maintenance of the, um, the, the limbs, the, the, the tree-like structures, that's all in the agreement between the town and Crown Castle. And we maintain that. Verizon has nothing to do with that. By we, you mean Crown Castle? Wait for number two, go around. Yeah. <laughs> Make the second one easier. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Do we have, does the town have direct agreements with Verizon or does Verizon agree with Crown? No, we, we have the direct agreement. With Verizon. Correct. And in fact, when, when their attorney called up a month ago, three weeks ago, and started to read me chapter and verse about the 60-day the shot clock, I just told them, you may very well be right, but until the planning board is satisfied and the town satisfied, I'm not signing an agreement with you. So, you know, you, you, can, you can cry about that all you want. He, he didn't understand. This is a unique situation. Most towns don't own their own tower. Yeah. And, um, they're not used to dealing with this. Everybody I talk to can't believe they're going. To even Crown Castle, um, I've, over the years, Jeremy and I have dealt with uh, a couple. Crown Castle actually bought the, the interest in the tower from JNS who was the original tower builder and the, the original town's partner. Um, he sold off all his shares to, to Crown Castle. They continually have to be reminded, no, it's our tower. You're managing for, for us. Um, and the guy I've been dealing with, uh, Zach, now, it's going on two years. So he has a better understanding. And, and we don't go through that each time we have a conversation. Um, but a lot of that stuff is, is on the town, not Verizon. So you're saying, Bill, excuse me, that the Crown Castle is the operator or the manager while the town has the ownership? The town, so, so with Jeff Staley, he came to the town and basically said, I will build you a tower with my money. I will take it through planning board using my money. And in return, you allow me to build a tower for you on your property and I manage it for you and we split the revenue. So the deal is a 50-50 deal. Um, their end of the 50% though has to cover the ma most of the maintenance. Um, and you know, the agreement for who takes it down and, and how we split that, I don't remember, but it's, it's all in that contract. But uh, JNS basically paid to build a tower and then handed the ownership over to the town. Wow. Now, just another little piece of history. When, when that application went through, it started as a three-legged lattice tower. At the final meeting, the planning board said, nope, you got to put a Christmas tree up. And Jeremy and I thought it killed the deal. Um, what it did is that Jeff Staley, to his credit, he came back and said, fine, I'll do that. But here's the, the new deal because it's going to cost me more money. He got 100% of the leasing on the first two carriers for the first five years. So for the first two years, the town didn't see any money. The, set, the third year, we had a third carry up there. We started to receive 50%. Now we're receiving 50% of everybody. Uh, but that additional cost was to cover the, the cost of the Christmas tree. And Bill, are there three carriers up there right now, or four or five or what? There are, th the, the tower is permitted for four carriers plus town equipment. Right now, there are three carriers. Don't hold me to this. I want to say that it's, I know it's Verizon. I know it's Cell One or whoever owns Cell One now. Uh, originally, I think it was AT&T. And then the, the third, I can't remember. It's either T-Mobile or Sprint is the third carrier. No, there's, there's no Sprint coverage. So then it's T-Mobile. Well, the, I had a Sprint it was useless up there. Mm -hmm. so, so, so our our review of the plans, our review of the plans show, as Bill is saying, uh, um, mountings for four RRH units on the tower. Correct. Uh, but, but they're all within. They're all within the um, the uh, the monopine structure. Correct. So the only other thing that's up there presently is an antenna, single monopole antenna for the. Did we lose Peter? 
he got bored. Ah, there, there he is. is back. <laughs> nice to see you. Sorry. <laughs> a single, a single monopole uh, whip antenna for the police department. Um, and we're also trying to get somebody to give us a good answer on how we could get the highway department and possibly the fire department up there as well. So that they, they may be coming at some future date. So, but it's the police and three cell phone carriers at the moment. The only thing I wanted to add just on the, what Bill had said about the 60 days, which is correct, but our uh, reading of that provision and the various, the numerous cell tower applications we've reviewed is that technically it is 60 days, but it's 60 days from the determination that you have a complete application. So if you don't have a complete application, in your opinion, uh, in the board's opinion, then that 60-day clock really isn't running. But that's neither here nor there if you're satisfied with, with the issues. But if they're making a new submission, that will you know, remains to be seen or looked at. Um, with, with regard to Bill's comments about the ownership uh, that's beyond our, our expertise and the degree to which that complies with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. That isn't really, you know, subject for, for our comment either. So I'm not sure where the board would go with that. Um, I, I would also say, Matt, that, that a lot of that, remember this original tower did go through full site plan review. Right. So those issues all would have been dealt with, uh, with the original application. When the application went through, it was Verizon, and I, I think they called themselves AT&T at the time. Melissa, you may want to go back and take a look at that, because T-Mobile came on a couple of years it's after. changed names a couple of times, right? Yes. From what I've seen. But you may want to go back and look at how the, the planning board dealt with that application right. uh, as well. Because so you mean, Bill, you mean those issues associated with the bonding and with insurance? Because it was, a, it was once previously approved, so, so maybe those arrangements will be satisfactory for this re revised application. I, 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 would, I would believe that that's the case. I, I, okay. Even if it wasn't the towns, I would think that that was dealt with. But in this case, it is the town's tower and there is an agreement between the town and our partner on how to deal with that, so. But is it, with regard to the insurance though, does, do, do the carriers provide any kind of insurance to the tower owner? Yeah, on, on, a, on a yearly basis, we get So that's, that's up to speed then? Yeah. So that, maybe that insurance has to be um, revised to incorporate the new design or the, or the new carriers or the new antennas, but that would just be a matter of whether that has to be updated. And, and that would the be other comments that are on our memo, those are just matters of really correcting some uh, omissions or um, a couple of them are mistakes mm -hmm. in their application, and that's for the board to handle as it so chooses. Right. So Matt, let me ask you, when, when do you expect we would have a complete application? Well, when we get their next submission, we would take a look at that. And, and the things that we're commenting on are really just very short or brief matters of whether certain pieces of information are included in the revised material. So we're looking for a revised submission from them on those, um, on those matters of, um, of completeness. You know, the, uh, some of the some of the data that's missing, the names of the carriers, uh, the the overall height, the um, the inclusion of this of the of the road on the site plan that's been submitted. So just those items that I went through just before. So Melissa, have they given you any? Uh, have any of us or Bill, when you are talking to the attorney, has anyone got any insight into when they're planning on uh, correct? Uh, I haven't. Sure? I haven't heard from them probably two weeks. No, and I and I am kind of trying to stay out. Only the second, only the the second application is now I'm being heard about. But I haven't heard from Scott Olson. I'll come back in. <laughs> I I will reach out to our partner Zach at Crown Castle tomorrow and just see what his understanding of where they are with the application. Yeah, I mean, if the board is meeting, if the board has this 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 virtual Zoom meeting technology done pretty well. If you go back to every two week meetings, you, they, they could be back on back on in two weeks. Yeah. The other thing that I had suggested uh, was, well, gee whiz, if you're bringing another application, because I guess Verizon needs to change another piece of equipment up there, something behind the antenna. And I said, why don't you just do it all at one time? For some reason, they've got different entities there's someone this is coming from right the, the application will come from another person yes and then there was something to do with the structural that doesn't fit with this 
there were two different valid reasons right. that they said that we really can't combine the applications. So it'll actually be uh, the first application is being handled by Scott Olson, who's an attorney out of Albany. The second one will be handled by Crown Castle itself. Um, so it, that and they're seemed to just make it starting difficult. to talk with the building department, and then that will be referred to us. So I have a question. <laughs> this is Stuart here. Is there anything that uh, the applicant is proposing to do? Does it impact the ability of the other carriers to continue using the tower? I don't believe so, and and that the town nor Crown Castle would permit that because we've got a guarantee to to all the carriers uh, to their satisfaction that there's that one doesn't block out the other. Right. So. Um, it, is there a, should we be uh, asking the applicant to hold the town harmless uh, in the event that they muck up the other carrier's ability to use the tower that we've promised to let them use? I will discuss that with Crown Castle tomorrow and, and see if I can't get them to respond to that question to you. Okay. But that's a good question. Yeah. We should... and, and keep in mind, they're also on the hook too, Crown yeah. Castle. Yeah. So it's in their interest to make sure that it doesn't happen. Okay, John here, a couple of quick questions. One I may have missed totally. Why are they doing this? Well, this was just replacing antenna. They're, they're replacing, yeah, they, they're replacing. They're replace, what they're doing is they're replacing, uh, I think, single band antennas with dual band antennas. So it's going to be uh, a, be, a, a wider coverage area and stronger reception without <clears throat> more space on the tower. And it'll, it'll permit them to have more traffic up there. Also, the antenna now are, are over 10 years old. So, you know, my guess is that it's not keeping up with the, the newer technology and it wears out. Mm. That's my understanding. They may have a better answer for that. But. Yeah, and so the question is, <clears throat> when can we put them back on the agenda? I, th I think Melissa mentioned before, I think the ball's in their court. I think they need to I'm get- I'm waiting for them to come back with your recommendations, with Matt's recommendations. And I made it clear to them in my conversation, it was a very good positive conversation. I said, you know, you guys need to, to deal with this. The, the one, the bonding issue was a big, you know, concern of theirs. And I said, well, I'll talk to the planning board and. You know, that, that's something I believe is on the town's end of it, and we can de dispense with that or deal with that appropriately. But the rest of it seems to be pretty easy, and they, and they didn't seem to have a problem with it. So uh, I don't know whether the coronavirus thing is, has slowed them down and being able to respond. Um, I mean, it's in their court, though. Okay, so uh, my question for the board is, does anybody else on the board have any questions or issues regarding Verizon? And so we can move on to the next item. No. Okay. All right. So the next discussion is uh, Selena. Um, again, Matt has a prepared uh, memorandum for the next one um, with quite a few items on it. Um, but Matt, again, if you would like to uh, bring us up to speed with that and see when uh, they'll be prepared to take their next step. Well, their next step is to respond to the memo. So, um, uh, uh, so I can go through what we've um, included in the memo. Um, uh, but certainly, you know, the key thing is that the planning board's engineer, Renier and Larios, uh, spoke to Ulster County Department of Health, and um, Ulster County Department of Health responded in writing, which we included in the memo which says that there, there's, been no, there's been nothing done with regard to engineering on this project. There's no, we've been told for six months now, really since the first appearance of Salinas, that they had an engineer who was going to be submitting an engineer's report. And in fact, that engineer talked to, to Dennis Larios about three or four months ago. And he also told Dennis Larios that he would be submitting an engineer's report. And that engineer's report was going to do multiple things. One, it was going to be um, uh, providing a, some sort of a conceptual plan for the project's eventual hookup into the town 
um, system, the town central septic system, uh, and show the feasibility of it and show that they were moving in the steps in the direction of what their verbal commitment was, that that would be something that they would be pursuing. And so the submission of an engineer's report by everybody concerned, including the applicant, was, was viewed as a, a specific thing that they would do that would show one good faith, it would show to show the feasibility of this, and it would also make everyone more comfortable with completing the review of the project with the existing facilities after this health department approval, because we know that there's going to be movement to this next um, phase of the project. So the, um, that's the purpose of the engineer's report, which has not been received. And then there's the comment from the Ulster County Health Department, um, which they were also hoping for the engineer's report, because the second purpose of the engineer's report was going to be to document what the existing system is now, so that operation of it, even if on a temporary basis, could be approved. And so according to the Ulster County Department of Health, there no submissions have been made, and that there is not approvals for them to operate uh, at this stage. And if there's any question about that, that's to be taken up with us, the County Health Department, and the answer is to be supplied to the um, planning board, because the planning board has, has an obligation. The other question, Matt, is that as far as we know, that they have not applied to the town or, or requested to the town to, uh, to become part of the uh, sewer system. Well, that's one of the things is that as part of this report, this this engineer's report would be the first, that would be an attachment to a petition or a request to the town for the town to start consideration of them joining in. This engineer's report would be the first step in their being able to petition it. There has to be an engineer's report that shows that it's viable. And then the town board sees that report, sees the petition, and chooses to begin processing it if they see fit to want to process it. So that engineer's report really was the first step towards them uh, uh, making the connection to the town system and documenting what's there now. And the, and the, um, the, the county health department um, has indicated, I think, in that email that they sent us that, um, um, I'm, just, I'm just going back to it and reading. Um, no, and that, and that um, and Anthony Puccio is saying to Dennis that we've had no contact with them. They haven't contacted us. Can I can I speak? There's um there's really two phases that we're talking about here. One is the the connection to the town system, and possibly an addition to the size of the buildings. That's phase two. But for phase one, we want to get the parking and the site approved as is. So if you're bringing that back to septic, that's a septic system that's been there for for thirty years. Yeah, but it's not permitted. It's not. It's no longer permitted. There's, I don't believe I don't that's true. Why, I don't understand what, you, what what your comment is. The Austin County Health Department is saying on numerous things, uh, the, the the restaurant, the um, the individual septics, that those things need to be permitted. Those things have been there for years, but they have to be permitted. Either the permits have expired or there have been changes <laughs> in requirements. But there are certain things I, that have to get done. You, you, the, I, I don't the, believe that's true, but I, I'll find out. I mean. Well, that's not, what, I'm sorry, but that's nonsense. We have a, a letter from Ulster County Health Department saying exactly that. That letter only refers to the extension of the septic system to the, the connection to the town. It does not talk about the existing systems. I don't believe. And we have a document that says that are, they are permitted by the Ulster County Health Department. The existing but, but the, that document I read, that's expired a year ago. Yeah, this, this is... Okay, well, if you want a survey of the existing system, we have to dig the entire thing up or do a forensic survey, flushing things down the toilet. Uh, it, it's a 30 year old septic system that's been in operation and is grandfathered. So we, 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 just, we, just, we just want the Yolkson County Health Department to say it's okay to, okay. to hook up on the Right, I, I think the planning board's position is that we want the Yolkson County Health Department approval. Well, I, they never said it wasn't okay, so that's why I'm confused. But I will, uh, I will, I'll talk to Anthony. Well, if you look at item number two in our memo, it says the planning board engineer Larios also indicated that the applicant's project engineer has indicated to him that an engineer's report addressing current septic facilities, improvements, conditions, permitting status, and future central system hookup would be forthcoming, and that, um, and that, uh, 
It's the, the restaurant. I think the pool is okay. Um, but the, those things are not adequately permitted to operate on a temporary basis. This isn't me saying it. Um, it's, it's, it's what we have is from, from, from Anthony Puccio. So I think that's something we need to get straightened out. Okay, understood. So we're, we're basically in the same position. We're waiting for a complete application. Well, there certainly is a lot of site plan comments that relate to, you know, they're, they're, you, I'm not sure, Jess, if you're still referring to this idea of a temporary operating um, permission, a temporary operating permit. Um, well, that, that would be great. And we, we did speak about that if we were to, to show uh, intent of, of, to, per, to pursue the connection of the, to the town system, that you would consider that. But... We, it's going to take it's going to take a long time to engineer and 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 do the construction to connect to the town system. So in the we just like to get our parking a parking approved so that we can lift this violation, which is preventing us from continuing construction and operating. But part of what we agreed to, as far as a uh, temporary operating permit, was that they had to prove that they were going forward with getting septic approval and getting tied into the town septic system. And so right. far, there's been no action in that regard. Yeah. So, well, it, 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 it wasn't just an agreement to consider it either. It was to see that something agreeable to everyone was presented and no, actionable. I, 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 I agree. Um, our engineer needs to produce some documents. Um, we've already started. We, we, we met with Larry from the water department, and we, we've already started with the design, we priced it out, Selena approved it. So we've, we've actually come pretty far. We just need to submit documents, which- uh, I, will, what I was starting to comment on about the um, temporary operating approval that we reviewed the zoning ordinance. And the only time that there's a temporary um, uh, approval given is when there's a, uh, a temporary certificate of occupancy, but that requires a site plan approval. In other words, you, you have to have your approvals before you can get that operating permit. And, and the site plan approval is, addressing a lot more than just the parking. You know, so, that, so that's why we, we do need an engineered plan. We need to see how stormwater is being handled. We need a, a site plan approval on the parking, as you said, on fencing, on paths, on lighting, on signage, on grading, and landscaping. So th those comments are, are, have been in six months that we've been asking for. I, I agree. Um, so this board would not consider recommending a TCO from the building department if we adequately show that we are pursuing the, this connection to the town. To no, the no, site. if you get a site plan approval, then, that is no, then that's no issue. These site plan issues are minor. You know, this whole issue that the board had about the expansion of the building, <laughs> now just to say on a positive note, you know, we haven't found any real indication of expansions of the buildings. And when I've gone through the building department records with the building department, we looked at old photographs. And so we're, we're, this big issue that we had with zoning about the expansion of a non-conforming use, as far as we as planning consultants are going, we're, we're sort of dropping that. And it seems like a pretty simple site plan application. Okay. That parking, fencing, paths, lighting, signage, landscaping. And if you get that approval, then the ability to operate as long as there's, you know, health department approval on the septic and water systems. Um, and there's a movement to the satisfaction of the board and the town board of you moving into the, and not, not approval of the central system, hookup, right. but just evidence of you moving in that direction. Ev evidence, yeah, you need engineering drawings for, most of that is need in, in, you're in need of engineering drawings and health department um, sign-offs. I, I have to talk to Puccio. That, well, we, need we need engineering documents on the, on the water and sewer, but we also need engineering documents on the site plan. I know. I know. Waiting. I, I have a checklist. I know. I think I, I, I think I speak for the whole board in that uh, I, I believe the whole board would very much like to see this project finished and get working and come up the code. And uh, we don't want to see it sit and just languish there. We would like to see this project get finished. And I think the whole board feels that way. We just want to get it up to code. Okay. Quick well, we question. have our marking orders. Um, we should come back once we have the engineering drawings and the health department approval, correct? Quick question. Jess, have they done anything to be 
applying for inclusion in either district, water or sewer? No, um, and you know what, I would need our engineer to speak to that. I, I don't believe we need to for, this, for a septic and we're not asking to be included into the water district. What do you mean by you're not asking? I think, uh, well, with, with, as far as septic, I believe that uh, what I was told was that you're automatically included once you connect to the septic system. It's different than the water system. But this is technical stuff that I'd have to refer to you to my engineer. But there are specific boundaries. Yeah. No, How I think could they be automatically included? You know, I think... I I'm think not sure. I, I would have to refer you to my engineer. We do have an engineer. It's Morris Associates. You know them from uh, Woodstock Commons and uh, Bradley Meadows Plaza. And they've been working on this. They just haven't produced the documents that you're requesting yet. Right. Uh, but I wasn't really clear, Jess, on what you're saying either. It, 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 everything we've been talking about is for a connection into the city's, excuse me, the town's um, um, central septic system. Yes, uh, and that and that uh, Dennis Larios is recommending that it, that it isn't going to work for the water system, so it's really just the septic system. What do you, what do you mean by it isn't going to work for the water? That the costs are higher, that the connection isn't as easy, and that the capacity um, uh, is is. Um, I'd have to get Dennis Larios' notes on that, but he in a memo to the planning board suggested that it was much more feasible for the septic system than for the water system. I think I remember that from a couple meetings ago. That was, yeah. That so, uh, does, does anybody else you? on the board have any uh, questions uh, regarding, regarding yeah, to the yeah, I, I, Peter, I do. I do um, too. Okay, I would like Melissa to forward me any communications that she may have regarding Dennis Larios's suggestions on either water or sewer regarding I mean, Selena. I'd like to see them. Have we gotten anything recently from Larios? Matt, no, help me out in, here. It was only in a few emails, and, and I have those emails as well. Because so I, I, I don't have much communication from Larios. I think Matt I think spoke to them more than me. Now I can touch base with you, Melissa, on those emails. Okay, perfect. And get them to John. What Thank I want. You. What I want to comment on is that Matt has mentioned, I don't know, a, a half a dozen different things. Signage is one, lighting is one, and Jess, whenever you respond, you just talk about the, the sewer. You really need to deal with the other things. They may be small, but they are all there, and they're all paperwork, and they need to be addressed. I understand, and, and our, our engineer will be doing most or all of that so we need to get okay. all rolling here and carrie from selena is on this call so right we'll, we'll direct our engineer to get moving but right, well, some of those chess are things that have to do with the site plan like landscape plan lighting plan signage plan no, I know. that's so, what i'm saying good they may be f relatively small compared to the sewer but they're not something you can dispense with i understand that was clear in the memo, and it's on our checklist. Has been for six months. Anyone else on the board have comments? No. Okay, so uh, we're just going to wait to get some more information, and uh, I guess that'll get forwarded through Matt, and uh, he can adjust his memorandum to reflect what has come in, and. Uh, when we get the chance, then we'll get it back on the agenda. Uh, but I, I just want to do want to add one thing. In the second paragraph of Dennis Larios' email, where he says also, that's not related to the future hookup to the central system. He says also, there's no speedies permit for the facility, nor flow confirmation letter based upon the whatever changes have been made to the system. He says the water system was active and on file. Uh, but no recent activity since the facility was shut down. And then he says the pool is approved. So those things are, the, the second part of the Dennis Larios email does address the existing water and sewer situation. Pool is okay, water is okay, and septic is not okay for now. Okay. 
All right. Well, we'll move on from that uh, Selena discussion. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for your participation. Uh, Thank the you. Next, next things we have on the agenda are some SDR uh, um, approvals. And I guess the best would be if Melissa could list them and then uh, maybe Stuart would run through like we usually do. Sounds yeah. good. These Can were I? the three from, from the March 5th meeting, so we were just waiting on approval. Uh, yes, I'll take a page out of Stuart's and I'll read them for him. <laughs> Melissa, may I, may I just interject? Am, sure. I needed, am I needed on the call now or can I, or can I get off? You're good. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for, okay. for all your information. Good night, everybody. Thank you. You've Thanks, done Matt. very well. Good night, Matt. Stay Thank safe, you. man. All right. So the draft resolutions from the 3-5 meeting, we'll say Peter adopted. Payone SUP 19-0495, Newsom and Agniska SUP number 19-0507, and Housed SUP number 20-0522. Okay, and um, I note that those are all also listed on the final agenda. At this time, I uh, propose that the board uh, approve each of the resolutions just recited, um, namely uh, Bayonne SUP 19-0495, Newsom and Agnieszka SUP 19-0507, and the House SUP 20-0522 as Drafted. Second. Second. Oh. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All right. There was one more thing that I added up that I added on last night. Did you guys anybody look at the minutes? Can we approve the minutes? Teresa's been working hard. Let's do it. Was it for uh from November and December? Oh. Yeah, let's approve those. We're no. trying to get back on track. I guess I need to get a second device up here whenever we do this. You guys should see how many screens I have in front of me. It's insane. <laughs> well, I can see the reflection of the light. Oh, you got any. Okay, one other note. Um, can I've you make a motion to approve the minutes if you're all in favor? All in favor? No moved. Uh, <laughs> second. <laughs> Aye. 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 All right, that's a common consensus. One other thing, meeting start time. Preference for everybody. I heard 6.30, seven. but 6.30 or 7. 7. seven. I think good. 7. 7. I, oh, I work sorry, until Peter. 5. Peter, you were just... It is 7, guys. Okay. <laughs> Leaves more time um, for dinner. Yeah. One, one other point Melissa brought up, I don't know if you all got it, was that the, the next meeting, which would have been the... Uh, Whatever it was, she it's can't make it because of the notices can't get out. Right. I so have to digitally have it in to the Woodstock Times a week prior. So I'm going to take over, Peter. So the next meeting will be May 21st at 7 p.m. You May? Will be invite. Yes. May yes, 21st. that's tomorrow is May. Tomorrow is May 1st, John. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I do know that. Yeah, but so. That's around the poll. Well, we would have, today was a workshop. But then we would have had a meeting next week. So I just. Yeah. Roll back in. I have canceled everything, so now I got to schedule everything back in. But I'm bringing back pertinent stuff. I'm going to some subdivision lot line revisions that were on the docket. We're first going to do those, and then slowly I'll bring back the canceled STR public hearings, and then we'll move back to bringing back the STR sketch reviews. Is there a problem with going to an earlier Thursday? Do we conflict with someone else's Zoom meeting? Rather than stretch it out to the 21st, could there I be a meeting on the 14th? I didn't, but then we're, are we, we're going to do the 14th and the 21st. I figured if we did the 21st, then we'd just keep consecutive and keep going on with the normal schedule. Okay. But if you feel different, I, I can figure it out. No, no, that sounds reasonable. I mean, you can make it easy. I mean, now, I had to cancel everything, so now I'm, I'm sifting through. <laughs> I don't know if there's any way to zoom the maps. I'm so. working on PDFs and I'm going to send you the complete files and I'm going to send you whatever notes I have and you're going to have everything I have prior to the meeting. Okay. See, I got a lot of work to do. But the, the <laughs> maps that I normally do, I won't worry about. No, don't worry about that. I think, I don't remember how, but I'm pretty sure there is a way in Zoom to share your screen. Well, uh, I tried 
it with a video. I have done it with photographs. Yeah, I didn't have luck, but we'll figure it out. But you're sure. going to have all the, you're going to have more information probably now sent to you via email than you would sitting at the table because I'm sending you everything. Right. So, at, at the top I, yeah. of the screen, there is a thing that says share content. Okay. And you can share I have screen, done that. photos. Yeah. Okay. So it is, it's very Possible. workable. Yeah. Um, the, my, my question, uh, wow. oh, yes, I can see that. Yes. That's your screen. Yeah. What I, it did not work for video, but it will work for anything that it reads as a photograph. Interesting. Fair enough. Um, hey, and Melissa, so, something on my screen, I can copy it. I can do a screen copy. All right. Uh, so real, real quick. Um, when we get when we have our meetings, are we going to get the essentially an email the, the same day in the format of the packet? In that maybe you could you'll be sending out a group. It's the same. Like yeah. we'll have the agenda, the preliminary agenda of the week. I'm keeping with the same schedule. You're just getting it all the email. Uh, so okay. the preliminary agenda will be the week prior. The final agenda will be that morning. I'll keep in constant contact. You guys are going to have everything that's in that case that's coming. You're, you'll have everything via email. But over the course of the week is the idea, not all at once on the oh, day. Oh, no. And I, I'm i sorry about sending you the minutes late last night. Therese sent them to me last no, night at 5.30. No. And I was like, you know what? We should really do this. Um, but um, typically, you'll have it way in advance. I'm pretty, I'm pretty on the ball with that. Oh, no, no. Not, I won't it, drop it, anything it, on you that day. No, Let no, it's not, no, it's not even about that so much as just uh, making sure that everyone had it's definitely not so much as that we haven't seen it before so much as on the day of the meeting just I was just I guess suggesting that if all the documents that you would readily print for a packet were just put in an email and sent to everyone at once, then all we're doing is sifting through the documents in one email rather than scrolling back and forth through different dates across, uh, you know, several weeks maybe uh, to, to, co to comb for them. Not, not, I, don't, I certainly don't, wouldn't mind having something. If, you know, if anybody has a problem throughout, I'm going to try to keep going as we're going and you're going to get more information. Just email me, call me. Sure. I'll do whatever to make it easier for all of you. I, I know this is different. I know it's new times of new technology. We're I think it's learning. great. <laughs> We're all learning. Yeah. Um, but I will do whatever I can to make this a lot easier for you. It's been adjustments on everyone. <laughs> so, I have to ask one yeah. question. Yes. How many of you are on, on phones instead of tablets or computers right now? Put your hand up if you're on a phone. I'm on a tablet. Peter, Peter's okay. on a phone. <laughs> well, the reason I'm asking is I wanted, I wanted to get a sense of how practical it is to use the phone because then I can have my iPad for the documents and have my phone and not have to mess around with a regular computer. I'm more comfortable like this. Um, well, I'll try it next time. I would discourage it. And that, uh, we lost, uh, it was totally powered up by the time we started the meeting and in 15 minutes, it, we lost all the power. We have to have it plugged in the whole time. Phones you are do. Terrible you for do. And um, the other issue is that all of my messages are coming up interfering. Who's the, talking? That's what I heard. Who's talking? Who just that's, spoke? Hi, this is yeah. Laura Cross. <laughs> oh, I don't see you, though. That's, that's, that's on purpose. <laughs> <It's good>. oh. <laughs> Two questions, please. Um, Only one, Stuart. I'm just uh, okay, first part. Um, <laughs> what's what is the record of the hearing? Um, in the meetings that we had before the COVID, they were recorded by that little device. What's the record now? Well, I'll have to submit them digitally, and it's it's a little bit more legwork. And then the contiguous neighbor notification, the word, the letter is going to have to get changed. So I'm just going to have to adjust the process to what we're doing now. But we're it's going to be followed the same exact way it was before, just under new technology. Right. So are you preserving this recording on the town's computer system? Is that it? Yes. And it okay. will be recorded and available for the public. It's being recorded right okay. now. Okay, good. The second this half of my question. automatically records it as a video. Within the week. So the night it's on, it goes to the cloud. That's how the program saves. Okay. But then Ashley has been, then she downloads, we post to YouTube. We 
it's all being executed probably more efficiently than it was prior. The uh, second half of my question, and Connor, this one's for you, Connor. Does your yeah. cat, has your cat met Judy's cat? <laughs> oh God, no. You don't, you, you really wouldn't want that to happen. My cat has, uh, my cat has social problems that even the worst mine. cats does not have. I she was in a cage because she didn't get along with the cats at the rescue center that they let run around loose. Oh boy. Oh, I could tell you some pretty horrifying stories about <laughs> Peanut here. Yeah. Oh, okay. she's made my life so difficult. Oh, oh. there she is. Oh. Guys, the only person that we're missing at Welcome James, but they were talking, so I didn't tell you. <laughs> um, right. Ryan Normal. I you? didn't hear from him, so I'm not sure. I'll touch base with him tomorrow. But, okay. Um, thank you all for showing up. Do they have any questions about the podcast? Okay, so if oh. no one else has any I questions, I'll entertain a Entertain I sent an email about the turn. farmer's market regarding the town boards. Anybody have any questions for Bill while he's here? With About the farmer's market? The yeah. one that's going by the colony? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when, when are we, we going to see more, I guess? So, so here's where we're at right now. The colony is on hold. They're shut down. Their application yeah. is shut down. The farmer's market is in a scramble. Um, House has has said they would be agreeable to having them come back there. However, the town board feels strongly that we'd rather see them over in the in the other area. Sign off. Smoke was <laughs> cooking downstairs. Here, Stu yeah, Stuart. Okay. You can... okay, never mind. And just so everyone knows, one thing we picked up in my Zoom meetings at work: uh, if you need to, if you need to mute yourself or something's going a little uh, noisy in the background. You just tap the screen once, and you can see there's a mute button usually in the bottom left. Oh, if you're on a computer, but if you're on a uh, pad, you just... And now we can't hear her. See, it works. You just have a little <laughs> button up at the top. That's and people, there were several people. There were you, somebody Kyle. speaking in the background. I don't know who it was a woman's voice. And John makes a lot of noise with moving things around. So if you're not speaking, it's good to... Mute yourself. Just a, just a little something I picked up. I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. That's okay. That was very informative. So, so I missed uh, it. Where do we stand on the on the farmers market? Is the is the town board able to uh, get that uh, going on the on the so new he, parking lot? Well, I yeah, think the so he, sorry. Here's what we're, here's what, here's where we are now. The the colony is is kind of in limbo at the moment. They've held back on their application. At some point, they're going to be back before you with their application, which will include the farmer's market on their lot. Presently, with, with circumstances the way they are, the town board felt strongly that we would much rather see them over there than over at Housed. So the yeah. town board is going to permit them. Um, I can send you probably tomorrow or early next week. They have an L-shaped. They'll be around the perimeter of the parking lot. The town board is going to permit them to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, it, 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 food is essential. That's an essential business. It helps the farmers and whatnot. I just really want to be very careful not to, to, let, to have you guys feel like we're overstepping. This is a temporary thing. The town board is, is going to allow it to happen. But we've been very clear with the farmer's market that uh, when this is all said and done and the colony gets back rolling, they have to put the application in and they have to come before you guys. If, Very good. The, Very good. if the colony decides for, for whatever reason um, that they're not going to move forward, then the town board would have the farmer's market come back to you guys with an application to set up, <clears throat> excuse me, in our parking lot and they can go through the regular process. So in the, in the bill, yep. in the, in the uh, across the road from Colony or next to Colony? Next to Colony. Okay. So it, it'll it it will be over in the general area of where they ultimately would like to be. Um, if you're familiar with that lot, um, very. You know, okay, so they're gonna they're gonna be booze along the border, the edge of the the blacktop with the Colony and the lot, and then across the back uh, lane of parking. What they're going to do uh, to follow guidelines and spacing and whatnot is the second row of parking out, they're going to have the vendors park um, perpendicular to the spots. And you'll see this in the map that I send you. 
perpendicular to spots to kind of create a barrier so that people, there's an access point, uh, which would be over by family. Um, again, well, you'll get, get all this in a day or so. And I, and I just got to ask really quick. I mean, I understand if things are moving, that things are moving quickly and we all have to be, you know, flexible. That's completely understandable. I just wonder, you know, it does sound like just knowing what goes on over there. And if a lot of people choose to park in the parking lot, things could get pretty congested. And I just wonder, mm -hmm. was, was maybe there's no time to move on it, but was Andy Lee Field ever discussed? in terms of being able to like actually really spread people out. Uh, and, and the problem with break. Andy Lee Fields is if there's bad weather, wet weather, Can't damp weather, there, it yeah. becomes an absolute nightmare. I suppose uh, let, so, yeah. The park let me a bit point of out, issue. let me point out that the Mountain View lot is right across the road. And right now with the parking and with, with the situation of the house, the parking is miserable. It won't be any worse if it's in the lot where the uh, paid parking is in the summer. And the paid parking. And walk across from, from Mountain View. The, the town board feels the same way. You know, it, back when this, when the farmer's market all started, uh, there were a lot of local tax paying shop owners who it just didn't feel right that we allow mostly out of towners to come in and set up shop tax free on town property to vend. That's how it, it ultimately ended over at house. Oh, and okay. um, all I can say now is that, you know, I think, what is it, 15, 20 years later, you know, as we look at it, I think most vendors would say, yeah, the farmer's market brings people to town. It's been successful. There are some local vendors who have, who have taken advantage of it. I think the concern about, uh, you know, helping them out for free is, is less. And I agree, I, you know, if it works out in the parking lot, I'm, I think the board would be fine with that. But again, ultimately, this is a, a short-term uh, solution. Ultimately, they're gonna have to come back to the planning board either where they are in the lot or over in the colony. But, but speaking for the mobility disabled, which I tend to do, Bill, you may have noticed yeah, that. Yes, you do. Getting it out of house means I will be able to go to the shop farmer's market, which I yeah. don't now because I can't do the walking. We, we think it's going to be better for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. And I had spoke to, I think it's Alexa and Neil, but I had spoke to Alexa, the colony people. And because of COVID, she basically, things might have to change on their current submission. She was kind of, you know, they're just rolling with it like everybody else. So yeah. I don't know if they're not really right now in a place to come back to us. So we'll, we'll see how that all rolls out. So this, the farmer's market thing, if we could, if you guys are all good with it, I think it's good because it is essential. And it's- We're totally good with it. When, when is it starting? May uh, I want to say May 27th. Okay. I, I believe it's at the end of May, and I don't think it was the 20th, so that's at the 27th. So, um, Great. Yeah, Thank you. we're all excited. The town board's excited, and, um, you know, ultimately they'll, they'll be back for some site plan, hopefully over at the colony. Part of the, the arrangement, too, the town board was agreeable that if they were to shift into the colony lot, that um, on rain days when maybe that lot was a little too damp that we would permit them as an auxiliary backup because they have fewer vendors to come onto the black blacktop. So the town board's all, all in on this one. So thank you. Bill? Yeah, Bill. My cousin runs the downstate uh, markets. He operates out of Ossining. Okay. And they're working on provisions for social distancing and spacing with their vendors. You'll so if, if you want me to give you his contact information, um, he's been in this business for a long time. I would be happy to forward um, their submission. Uh, no, 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 no. They're not asking to come here. I'm just no, saying no, 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 no. Some ideas about spacing. That's what I mean. I'd be happy when they give a submission, when they show me their their final plan, I'd be happy to forward it for, for uh, a critique. Um, they, they belong to, I don't know, New York State Farmers Market Association or some organization that's given them criteria. Okay. And, and um, 
they have spent a lot of time. They came back with three or four different plans. I think this last one that we settled on is going to push them to the edge, take up the least amount of space, and, and still work with a nice flow. I don't remember my cousin's business name, but I'm sure he's part of the same organization. Okay. Well, I'd love to have his input. I'll, I'll have, uh, when I get that to you, you can forward it. That'd be fantastic. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Here's thank you. Bill. Move to adjourn. Move Second. to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 See you all Bye, next take time. Take care. I'll we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Take stay care. Safe. Stay, stay safe. well. Thanks so much for putting this together, Melissa. Yeah. Yes, You're indeed. Well. Thank you. Now I got to find the leave message. For you. <laughs> if you you can either leave drag me. everything all the I way like to the left. I so much. <laughs> Bye, Laurel. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Help. How do you turn it off from an iPhone? So, Melissa, just to let you know, Peter ordered a webcam two weeks ago. I meant to, you know, I tried to talk to you on the phone and I was going to ask about that, but I'm there. Good job. I, I know. We played with it in my house, and on one computer, I couldn't have sound. It was ridiculous. We're, like, videoing, and, like, I'm talking on the phone. And then on my other one, I don't have webcam. So I was like, this isn't going to work. Right. And he's like, but it's not coming. I said, don't worry, honey. We can do it. Don't worry. Thank you, Laurel. <laughs> Take care. Right. Good night. Good to see you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. You should be able to click on up on all right. What do I do? Yeah. We're still trying to sign off. End meeting. Oh, bottom. Oh, bottom right. End meeting for all.